and welcome to another episode of The 13%. We are your hosts, Cynthia McDonald and Arthur Ward. Yes. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. How hey. you doing, boo-boo? I'm good. I'm How are you talk. doing? <laughs> no, no, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. You know, I, you know, I don't mind you calling me boo-boo anytime <laughs> you want, okay? <laughs> Feel free. I'm yeah. boo -boo. We free in this uh, this relationship, baby. It's all. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I call you baby. You call me boo boo. It's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh goodness. All right. So people, uh, thank you for uh, paying attention and also uh, giving us um, uh, space for our witty repartee. Mm -hmm. um, so before we ever get started, again, welcome to another episode of The 13%. We are your host, Cynthia McDonald and Arthur Ward. Um, and we are talking today about violence as a public health crisis in the campaign that we are working on called It's Hard Being Black. Um, but before we get into all of that, uh, make sure that everyone, if you would please, hit that like button, okay? Need you go ahead and do that. Hit the like button. Also subscribe to YFNA News and hit the bell so that every time that we go live or our sibling show goes live, you get a notification that we are. And also make sure you all are sharing these videos on your various social media platforms as we grow so that we can get more people together on these conversations and also if you are watching on uh, our Facebook Lives, uh, could you please hit the YouTube link so that you'll be able to actually go into the YouTube portion so that you can actually join into the conversation. Cool. All right. We got all that out the way. Did I miss anything, babe? I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight, we guys, we were actually supposed to have uh, a couple of guests that was on to actually, you know, join in this particular conversation. But um, uh, I think that they're having some difficulties or what have on. Oh, I, I see one right now. Yay. But we're going to actually bring in one of our other, uh, not sibling rivalry but uh, one of our other guests <laughs> um, that actually host in black and whites actually help us have this conversation. Uh, let's let's welcome first uh, Mr. Rick Larkhart. Hey, hey, what's going on, everyone? I can't Whoa. believe it. I'm <laughs> on 13%. <laughs> yes, you are. With the <laughs> Cynthia McDonald and the <laughs> Arthur Ward. Mr. Yeah, it's... I am honored we, to be it, here. Thank it you. It was a, a long deliberation, but uh, <laughs> you had the yays won out for you. So, uh, hey, you know, anytime I get to join, <laughs> anytime I get to join my siblings, my sibling show, it is always, always an honor. So, thank you so much for having me as a part of a conversation that is a much needed conversation. Yes. I tell yes. You, I, uh, I was excited about to, I'm still excited about tonight's show. So I'm glad to be and, and happy and honored to be a guest here uh, with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Rick. Yes. Um, I, I, now I know that I got like last uh, some notification about Representative LaShawn Ford getting pulled into the uh, Democratic National Convention. Yeah, that is going on. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's, so he may. Yeah. He may be able to pop in later. Hopefully, he is. Um, however, that's okay. We're the, the show must go on. We we gonna we gonna break a leg regardless, right? Yes. Right, right. That's what and happens. That's what happens. So, but we do have um, the wonderful Pastor Anthony Williams to also help really frame this particular conversation. So let's bring him on. Hey, Pastor Williams, how you doing? It's an honor to be with all you great soldiers. I'm very hey. humbled. You know. I'm a senior citizen, you all, so I'm very <laughs> humbled to be with all. Look, man, I'm gonna tell you something. You wanna get to be you wanna be 65, baby. It gets real You sick, only <laughs> you only one year older than me, Pastor Anthony. That's all right, baby. But I'm a senior citizen, man. I'm a senior citizen, baby. <laughs> in a pandemic. In a pandemic, Ford, Ford in a pandemic. Is trying to get in. That makes a big difference. No, Ford is trying to get in. We got loss in space coming into this technology. Oh, oh dear my. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you hear from him, please tell him to go to the very last email that I sent to everybody so he can get in. 
So if Representative Ford, get, he's trying to get in. I don't know what we we were we were in space together, and we talked. I could see him in his house, and he could see me. And you know, we just had to play around with this. You know, like I told you, I'm a senior citizen now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rep Ford has no excuse because Rep Ford is not a senior citizen. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not a senior citizen. I think I probably got him up on age. So there you go. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep that in mind when he joins too. I've not yeah. called him on that. Rep Ford is not a senior citizen. Ford, so no, you have no, you have no excuse. I, I give you for, I give you, you know, your political duty, sir. But right. you know, senior right. citizen, I, I ain't giving you that one at all. You know, what I'm saying. But, you know, Pastor Anthony, we are so happy to uh, have you, um, you know, hopefully uh, Representative LaShawn Ford can actually, uh, you know, join us a little bit later to, you know, help frame this conversation. But um, we are definitely talking about, you know, some of the initiatives that we are working on here in uh, Chicago uh, for uh, the greater portion of Illinois. And that is um, one, the executive order for rapid relief uh, in black communities that were just devastated by COVID-19 and also uh, the different uh, protests that happened um, at the wake of uh, the death of George Floyd. And also uh, the, um, the making HR 0433 uh, violence as a public health crisis be declared in Illinois so that we can get much, re uh, much needed um, help as far as like in our particular communities uh, concerning like, you know, the, the, the outbreaks of, of violence uh, within uh, predominantly black neighborhoods. So we're really happy that you're really here to um, help us with that. Uh, but I really want to uh, ask you first, if you can kind of uh, talk about how uh, HR 433 even came about. Well, my son, Nehemiah Williams, was killed February 21st, uh, 2018. Uh, mm. Prior to my son uh, being murdered, I had been studying violence 10 years prior to his death. I got a grant to study violence. Mm. And I realized in my journey with, with this issue of violence, I realized something was happening. I tried to convince representatives to have hearings that they 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 act like I was talking in Chinese. When my son got killed, Providence pulled me into a a whirlwind. And I recognized right then in terms of the fact that what I'd said ten years prior to my son's death, that violence was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And with the help of Lisa Hernandez, I was pastoring First Congregational Church of Burwood. I shared uh, what I was attempting to do, and I was talking about the federal level. She said, no, no, state rights, local, star local. She was correct. And so I engaged in an act of citizenship. And my citizenship skills kicked in because I've always tried to be an engaging citizen. And from that journey, we went around and we had hearings, and, uh, and then we pushed forth. We got the resolution passed in, in June of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, of course, coronavirus hit. But at the same time, uh, it's, it's un the, the governmental systems, they move slow. They will move as slow as you allow them to move. And if you don't push at these elected officials, they will stagnate the process. They will mm -hmm. really stagnate the process. Fast mm -hmm. forward, Lisa Hernandez indicated that she would like to continue the uh, process uh, by way of uh, ongoing hearings and a white paper, which is a part of the traditional process. Well, mm -hmm. we're in the exception to the rule clause. That's the last. Hold up. You can't do what you did yesterday. I mean, are you, I mean, you smoke crack or something, lady? That's what I wanted to say to her, but I was trying to be nice. So fast forward, we have our foot on the gas. We're calling for an executive order, two executive orders, two executive orders, rapid relief funding to the black citizens of the state of Illinois. That's Representative Sean Ford and executive order violence is a health crisis. Mm. It is a disease, but it's not contagious. Mm. And Dr. Yaz Simpson, a black epidemiologist, was critical 
and helping me to understand the disease part. Because she said, because Gary Slucker, another epidemiologist, labels violence as a disease. So who do they want to give the shots to? Us. Mm. So there's, there's power in the pen. And the pen is mightier than the soul. And I think right now in American history, you know, if we don't take advantage of this pandemic, uh, 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 or uh, as it relates to our people, then something's wrong with us. We're in a pandemic, mm -hmm. and you've got a system that wants us to act as though everything is still the same. Are you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You, no, he can do that. Look what Trump is doing. Trump is signing executive orders all over the place. Yes. Yeah. He signed, uh, <laughs> July 6, 2020, he signed the Hispanic prosperity initiative executive mm -hmm. order mm -hmm. so right now our black our black elected officials in illinois with the exception of state representative sean the ford sean ford have their heads in the same mm -hmm. i mean the cream rises to the top in times of crisis and times of crisis the wise build bridges and the foolish build barriers and old ways can't open up new doors and so if we allow the system to let us say, well, you know, we're going to give you something that is over, then you got to be smoking crack. What do you do? And no offense to anybody that smokes crack. But I'm just telling you, I cannot, I mean, I cannot as consciously as a citizen, as a minister, gospel, as a black man, as a father, we must step up to the plate when it comes to our our community right now, men have to be men. Everybody got to play their role now. Whatever your role might be, play your role. The survival of our people is our, at, at stake, and they want to give our children stones instead of bread. Mm -hmm. So here we are, fast forward. And by the way, in that story, my son, when he got killed on the same day as Malcolm X, I wouldn't discover that in two two weeks later it just happened to pop up and so i said you know you no know, my son near mine got killed the same day as Bob. Mm -hmm. but to understand where this is at in terms of the providence of where we're at with this uh on may 19th which is malcolm's birthday the united church of christ and state representatives came together at first congregational church in Irwin. And then this legislative journey began. And the next day was the day of Pentecost. I realized that something was happening beyond me, just this experience. Because understand, America was built on violence. Racism is violence. What, what white people are doing right now, they're saying, we've got pandemic uh, uh, racism. No, no, no. Pandemic violence, racism is violence. The word violence means to violate. Mm. The simplicity of it. So when you when you pass a key piece of legislation, you automatically begin transforming the culture of violence. It's social engineering. They do it every day on us, don't they? Yes, every they do. day. A, a piece of law. Look at we would be on the back of the bus if it wasn't for legislation. Right. And so mm -hmm. I mean, I thank God for the young soldiers of Ados mm. and at at Avalon Park Community Church and thank God for Brother Marlon Watson and all the great souls we have a reparations now sign on the front of our church our brothers mm -hmm. and sisters any conscious black person say I think I would attend that church mm -hmm. every black church every black church that's getting tithes and offerings Every member ought to say they pastor. Pastor, mm. why don't you put a reparations sign on front of the church? Reparations now. Because I leverage in this presidential campaign, which one of you all are going to sign off on, res on, on reparations? And we've got to put that out there right now. I don't want to hear about you going to give me a damn tax cut. Mm. i tell you what. Allow reparations to properly be put in place and see the difference it will make in the lives of America. It will create an economic stimulus for everybody. Hold up. America, last time I checked, is a capitalist republic. 
So and understand the art of lays off fat. Everybody gets a cut of the pie. That's Hell, right. Everybody. That's how everybody eats in America. The good, that's the right. bad, and the ugly. That's right. So guess what? White folks told Representative Ford, "We like the idea of an executive order because mm -hmm. the construction industry is slow now." And they mm -hmm. need a cash influx. I don't care if they get it from Porky Pig. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> Representative LaShawn Ford. Representative LaShawn Ford is the only black man in America after the death of George Floyd that came to black America with a solution. Mm -hmm. Executive order. Well, guess what? Lincoln signed an executive order. Ford is coming on right now. I'm talking yeah. about you, Ford. Lincoln signed yeah, executive we, order. We talking so about you, uh, good, Red, uh, Red Ford. We're talking about what you, they man. say. Your ears must be burning. Yeah. They, they... <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Now, let, 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 let me let, let me shut up and conclude with this. Uh -huh. Do you know? Had if Prisca signed an executive order, all the blue states will follow. Duh. Yeah. But yet they want to continue to use the same asinine political tricks on us. We have mm -hmm. leverage in this election. And the leverage that we have in this election is that we must say with one voice, reparations now. Mm -hmm. And every so-called so -called Negro leader in America, you got to either produce or get out the way and let those who are prepared, who have the intelligence, the heart, and the sincerity of our people to move the agenda forward. We gotta survive in America and we can't do it being stupid. We're in a unique position, a unique position in history to get what we need for the future of our people if we're going to survive in America. Right. Nice. Representative Ford, thank you for joining us. I, I know that we probably having some like miscommunication, like where you at? Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh oh, wait, where'd you go? Okay, yeah, coming back. We figured uh -oh. you was at the convention. Well, yeah. I am doing it all. He's doing it all. <laughs> you know, you know, you let, let me throw this out there. He can do it all because he's a member of Five Beta Single Fraternity Incorporated. See, oh, the, wow. men of, the men of Five Beta Single Fraternity Incorporated go out can do just about all things together. See, simultaneously, it's a skill everybody doesn't have. That, That's the thing. That, that 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 plug will cost you twenty dollars. Right. I got you. I got you. Right. I'm a plug. My, uh, I'm a plug. Yeah. I'm a plug in black and white again, so I can get a representative for it on my show after this. Right. <laughs> put it on my tab, Arthur. Put it on my okay. tab. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you can just cash at me at at Cam Lemon. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Representative Ford, uh, your uh, frat brother Rick Lockhart of our sibling show in Black and White, who is joining us in this conversation. Thank you. And, uh, uh, Rick Lockhart, uh, your Phi Beta Sigma uh, frat brother, uh, Representative Sean Ford. Thank you. Introductions have been made. Great. Representative Lock Sean Ford. <laughs> Thank you again for joining this conversation. Um, I, I would love to uh, get your particular in, in, an input on, on the uh, HR 0433 and also the executive order. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Go. Well, thank you for having me on the 13%. It's, it's great. And um, to be able to talk about what's most important, I want to thank you all for picking up the issue for Black people. Um, you have it streaming live that um, it's hard being black and violence as a public health crisis. That's where this all started. One, mm -hmm. Pastor Anthony came to Springfield last year and we passed a resolution to, um, to identify and to name violence as a disease. It overwhelmingly passed the House of Representatives and the only we would have had 118 votes, but a few people were absent. Everyone mm -hmm. in the um, House voted for it. We just need the governor to act on um, doing it. What will it do if the governor just simply um, turned this bill, this resolution into law? We can use Obamacare. We can use the Affordable Care Act to treat people. Mm -hmm. That's a really good thing to be able to use Medicaid Medicare to treat people that's experiencing trauma in America. That's why mm -hmm. President Obama passed it. He wanted everyone to be healthy, not only physically, but mentally. 
but the governor needs to um, declare violence as a disease. He could do it as an executive order since we won't be back in Springfield until November, or we have to wait until November. We're calling on him to do it now. The other one is to um, executive order to bring all of the state agencies to the table for the governor to bring every state agency, IDOT, um, Human Services, Higher Education, ISBE, you name it, all of the areas that the governor is responsible for appointing people, he should bring them to the table and deal with black people because we need help in our neighborhoods. But the governor refuses to sign the executive order to do this. What we asked him to do was to set up an office of equity and inclusion. And that office of equity and inclusion would be the headquarters for the task force that we would put forth. The task force would be made up of community people, businesses, um, faith based, and all of his agencies and members of the general assembly. If he did that, all the money that we have gotten from COVID um, relief from the federal government, I think we could very well help black people because we've gotten $3.5 billion from the federal government mm -hmm. to deal with COVID related issues. Mm -hmm. And so we, not to mention the money that we, um, that we pass in our regular state budget and um, our capital bill that we pass. So there's a lot of money that the governor really wanted to focus on the problems that we're having in the black community. It could very well happen. And that's uh, what we're calling on him to do. Okay, when you say the $3 billion for the COVID related issues, would these issues be economic or would they be health related? They would, they everything, health, okay. economics, like for instance, Right now, people could get um, they could get rent relief up to five thousand dollars. Right now, everyone mm -hmm. could get rent relief. That covers everyone if your income is is a certain amount. You could be seventy thousand and below, and you could get um, five thousand dollars, even if you're not behind, because everyone's been impacted by COVID. That's mm -hmm. money from the federal government. We've gotten three point five billion dollars from the federal government. Everything that we spend in the state, COVID related is federal money mm. the federal government sent that to the states so mm -hmm. we already know that black people have been hit the hardest mm -hmm. by COVID. so i don't understand why this governor hasn't made it clear that we're going to help the communities that's been hit the hardest in the in the most aggressive way and that's mm. what our executive order said let's do it now and he refuses. He treats this as if it's just um, as if we don't need to be targeted, and that he could treat black people as if we have the same problems as everyone else. And we right. know we don't. We know that the numbers tell us that we have severe problems as it relates to comorbidities and um, health. That we have um, experienced so much trauma due to the violence um, because of COVID. So everything could be um, tied to COVID in the black community. And the governor mm -hmm. had $3.5 billion that he could just provide rapid relief for black people. Right, right. That's um, that's very poignant that you, you mentioned that we already know because of, you know, uh, economic disparity and health disparities, how we are disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Uh, I think it was even telling how in Illinois, the very first person that died of this particular infection was a black woman in Inglewood. And if anyone knows anything about Inglewood, Inglewood is a South Side neighborhood that is also very much so uh, depressed as far as like economically, socially, health wise, uh, and, and the violence that that particular area actually experiences. Um, we had a question from the chat. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was asking, let's see, would the, um, would it be a new diagnosis in the DSM? And, 
and the DSM is the um, is the particular manual that a lot of uh, psychiatrists and psychologists use in order for them to uh, diagnose uh, mental uh, mental illnesses. As far as like violence being declared as a public health crisis. Well, we have a um, epidemiologist, and the pastor can speak to that because we before we did this, we I did our research. And um, yeah, Simpson, um, an epidemiologist could speak to it. So, um, Pastor? Uh, the CDC, everybody knows who the CDC is, right. has declared mm -hmm. violence as a health crisis in America. Now, that is your point of reference right there. Mm -hmm. So if the CDC, it's like the CDC declared that the coronavirus was a pandemic. That's the CDC. They have already declared it as that. The issue is, is developing, a, there's a response right here in the state of Illinois. As a matter of fact, in America, in any civilized society, if you have a problem, you should fix it. If you got a problem in your life, you want a solution. And mm -hmm. Representative Ford and the citizens are working together for the solution. So we're asking all citizens, and because mm -hmm. of the leadership of people like Ados and others, Brother Marlin, go and go to go and, and sign up on it's hard being black. Uh, what's that? Dot dot net uh, dot, dot info. info. It's hard being dot black. Info. Dot info. Mm -hmm. that, now, now that's we want to pass that around the state. See. Prisca's not going to win this battle. And I realize we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Right now, there's a petition out here. And we just want our people, get it to our people, sign it, bang, and push it on. If you want to leave a little donation for them to keep it going, do that too. That's the right thing to do because you need to pay at least $5 or $2 for your, your revolution or your fight. But in the meantime, we have... We have offered nothing but solutions in pandemic time. But what about, the what about Sister Yah about the contagion? That's what I thought you would tell them. Oh, yeah. I talked about, yeah. Oh, oh uh, that's why I talked about the CDC. I'll, I'll back by. And I said this earlier before you got on the line, Rep. I talked about Yah Simpson. And it was because of this brilliant, brilliant woman who, I mean, true to her craft as an epidemiologist. Once she came into the equation, the epiphany was that. And it took a course. And she said, okay, this is how we got to define it. Because if, if, if we declare this as a disease that's contagious, the first people they'll want to give shots to is black folks. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Revisit history, Tuskegee, you know, Tuskegee, yeah. revisit history. So, no, we're not doing that. It's a disease, but it's not a contagion. And it and as the and, and, and the process is through education, which I, I'm gonna go through collaboration, civility, and redirecting the fund. Because you have people who have received violent prevention dollars and they march people down an expressway. I don't think that's how you stop violence taking people down an expressway. Mm -hmm. So there's a process in place. The thing is, is that the governor needs to have the courage to sign. I mean, first of all, Representative Ford has to be who he is, our statesman. He's a, he's a, he's a great statesman. A great statesman. He's a great statesman. Yes. A great statesman. But I'm saying this, it's going to take all of us, all of us, because right now, you know, this is not, this is business, you all. Our survivors at stake. Right. This courageous young representative is an example of what it means to be a public servant. He's doing his job. It's like I'm doing my job as a as a cleric. Like I tell Ford, we're just doing our job. But right. it's going to take mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to be no damn hero nor a kamikaze pilot. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying right now, we have something here in Illinois that we can stand on as black folk. We must demand that J.B. Prisker sign these two executive orders. How dare he, rep he disrespect Representative Ford? Representative Ford has reached out to the man. Representative Ford is a seasoned elected official. 
senior seniority has passed legislation. He just doesn't go down to Springfield and snore. So I'm saying to disrespect Ford is to disrespect all of us. Y'all need to hear me on this. Right. The disrespect for it, and we and we allow people to treat us like Rodney Dangerfield. Come on, mm -hmm. we have an opportunity. America is now in its fourth revolution, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna say this: America is in its fourth revolution, and it's always about us. Mm -hmm. Christmas addicts, right? Mm -hmm. Civil war, right? About y'all. Civil rights, about y'all. George Floyd. Can't breathe about y'all. Now, how are we going to move into the 21st century intelligently if we don't solve the problem? We know who we are, but we're Americans. You cannot, you know, James Baldwin said it this way. He said, America and A&D, the Negro, is a sad story. Mm. America and the Negro is a sad story. So we need to be intelligent. We need to be practical and we need to be very revolutionary by way of legislative action. We would still mm -hmm. be on the back of the bus if it wasn't for legislation. You right. can do all the mm -hmm. talking you want at the end of the day. Demonstration, that's very important. But King mm -hmm. then said, okay, how do we move the needle? Mm -hmm. We got to mm -hmm. move the needle. We yes. can't, we can, when we come out of this pandemic, we can't be at the bottom of the totem pole. Yes. You got to be on. an insane people to want that. That's right. That's right. And we have to come leverage on, our support. Come on, we can't live like now. I know better. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, here the post office under attack. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. We got a mm -hmm. black folk. You know what my Ford told me this, and I'm gonna let Ford talk. Representative Ford told me one day, he said, brother, he say, uh uh black folks go ahead to do something about the problem of violence. I said, Why you say that? He said, We're going to solve it. I said, Why you say that? He said, Man, we've been the most violated people on the planet ever mm. and i rest my hat on this so this courageous representative has gone beyond the call of duty now we've mm. got to join him and push this petition and this is going to play out mm -hmm. watch how it plays out but it's going to play out in our faith right so mm -hmm. we can just speak with one voice right. sign these executive orders right and then tell the democrats and the republicans in one voice which one of y'all signing off on the reparation package? Which one? Which one? Hmm. Now, I do want to let ADOS National know that uh, ADOS Chicago right now is on an email and call campaign to push other legislators to push Pritzker to sign this this uh, this executive order. Now, of uh, uh, Rep. Ford, what was our do you remember what the percentage of the black vote was for uh, for Governor Pritzker the last election? Well, there are some reports that he got ninety eight percent of the ninety eight percent. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and 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 so I think that I would be doing myself a disservice and the people that vote for me if I did not um, cause trouble, as as our late um, congressman said, John Lewis causing trouble. I, you know, it's not easy, you know, because I don't think the governor understands that we need, I don't know if he had a compassion that we need him to have, because mm -hmm. there's nowhere to turn but to help black people right now. I mean, it's playing out every day on TV. Babies being killed, people looting and riding in the street. That means something. That means that we need help. If you see people robbing stores, taking toilet tissue out, something's wrong. Yeah. And, and you know, how can we be Christians? How can we be believers in anything when we look at the people that's doing it and turn our nose up at them and say they need to just go to jail? You know, I agree that people need to pay the price for what they do wrong, but I also know that we have to make sure that we do everything that we're supposed to do mm. to prevent it. You know, Dr. King wrote after the riots in um, in Detroit that you know we not we shouldn't look at the riots that that's in the dark 
we should look at the people that caused the darkness. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that sin it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Dr. King believed that um, that at the time. Now, I don't condone it. I don't think that people should be um, doing what they are doing on Michigan and on the west side and the south side of Chicago. It's not right. But nevertheless, who am I? They got to they got to answer to, mm -hmm. that, you know, um, and I think that while if I condemn what they're doing, it, it would be wrong for me not to condemn a racist government that suppressed and oppressed the people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just go out and tell the black people and the, and the people that's doing the uh, that's in the streets, you better stop. <laughs> but then I don't call on JB and and the mayor to say stop. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. I don't call on the police to say stop. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. You, you got to, if we all, if we want them to be locked up, then some other people got to be locked up too. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, and I, I like this particular um, person that just said we need accountability, not just in the black community, but we had enough accountability. We need justice. Yeah. And, I, and I would definitely say that uh, doing these particular initiatives that, uh, you know, you're pushing for, Representative Ford, you're pushing for, Pastor Anthony, uh, that, you know, ADOS Chicago is pushing for in general is the, the road to justice. And and I, I definitely can, you know, we, we can always um, go down the, the lane of, you know, where is your compassion? You know, when we look at like legislatures, um, but unfortunately history has taught us oftentimes where that compassion is, right? And it's kind of like, how do you move people especially that's in these particular offices to do the right thing. You know how you do it? People got to do it. People got to do it. And it's, you know, A. Philip Randolph was, you know, I don't think that the move to end slavery was in the hearts of people right. that voted for it, the emancipation, but I think that it was the people that moved, mm -hmm. the civil rights movement it wasn't in everyone's heart. It was the political power that took place that that made um, that that made black people have a right to sit on the bus and not have to get up. I mean, if mm -hmm. we didn't step up, if we didn't fight, we would probably still be sitting, standing up for the white person. You know, we would still be we would still be in um, in our own bathroom. Mm -hmm. We still be mm. drinking in the uh, um, colored only section and, and all that, but people fall. And so mm. I think that no matter what, we have to really fight for uh, what's due to us. Mm. Uh, this is our country. I mean, I believe in the flag and the flag means everything to me. That red, black, and, and and what is it? What is the what are the colors I forgot? <laughs> what you talking about? Red, black, and green? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know nothing about the uh, the no, RBG, no. Yeah. but I know about that red, white, and blue. Right, blue. <laughs> and blue. I heard black. I don't know. I had some blue in there. I heard black. I don't know. I had some blue in there. Hey, I yeah. I have. That, that, hey, I have. Yeah, really yeah, black. Well, see, you know what, Rep Ford. Uh, the reason why that red, white, and blue means so much because we paid for it. Yes, that's yeah. right. We yeah. paid for it, okay? Right. We paid for it from uh, starting from the very foundation of the country yep. before it mm -hmm. became a country. That's mm -hmm. right. It wouldn't have you been know? a country without our wouldn't country. have been a country without us. You know we what I'm saying? Right. The, the America got the strength to separate from Great Britain because we were here. Exactly. They think 1619, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. And we didn't become a, 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 a state until when? The 1776. So there it is. Yeah. So Hello. so so the difference is, like uh, I think I, uh, Cynthia and I were talking about this earlier. People will always bring up, well, you know, there was slavery here and there was slavery there. Yes, of course there was. But this is the difference. First of all, the slavery that we experienced here was a corporatized, industrialized slavery, which was yes. totally different. We were turned mm -hmm. from people who were merely enslaved to actual cogs in a far-reaching uh, uh, commercial machine. And then the second thing, when they said 
all men are created equal when they finally founded this place, that's where they screwed up. Because what they should have said was all men are created equal except niggers. Right. But they forgot yeah. they didn't put that in there. Okay. They, you know what? So they since didn't... they didn't put that in there, we can go with this. And we've been working from that point from then on. Go yeah. ahead, Representative Ford. Yeah, yeah. They, um, the, the founders, as they call them, they actually didn't fix the constitution to include black people. Sure. And so, you know, that's why we had to get these amendments. Um, and that's why we were still counted as three fifths. That's why we still couldn't vote. So right. even when they wrote it, when they wrote the constitution, we were not included. Yes. You know, that's right. That's yes. right. Rick, yeah. you, uh, I think that you had a, a question that you want to jump in there. Go, uh, go ahead. I, I did. Thank you. Representative Ford. First, let me say that I am so excited to be a part of this movement and getting the information out there, reaching out to legislators. I'm, I'm curious, though, uh, if you're able to share um, how much support in the legislative branch do you have? And more importantly, how much don't you have? Like where 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 is the, the lacking of support? Uh, because I think it's important to note the, the legislators that aren't behind you so that their communities, when they're up for reelection, are notified they were behind this. And, you know, we can address that as that time comes. But where, what does the support look like when it comes to where we're at with, with both movements? Yeah, you know, I've been, this is something that we hope that we get more of the caucus behind, something mm -hmm. that I've been pushing for. Um, I think, um, you know, I think the pastor's been making calls and, and we, we got all of the supporters that have committed to the, um, to the, um, to the executive order on the website, it's hard to be, it's hard being black. So mm -hmm. I'm not exactly, I, you know, I don't know. I, I just have to say, I don't have uh, any, uh, a lot of blacks or others stepping up saying this is what we want. Right. But, but, but that's so you're, why finding, why you're finding the difficulty with us. We, need, we yeah. need people power right now. That's mm -hmm. why this, look at every day, thank God for WBON and Melody Spain. Every day, very small show, they allow me to come and to give insight in terms of the progress of where we're going. Uh, we set up a tent on the corner of 79th and uh, Carpenter. 15 mm -hmm. people got shot there, y'all, coming from a funeral. Mm -hmm. Now, had those people all died, that would have been worse than the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. A black woman's a black woman's breast was ripped apart. I think of the trauma of that. Look at her womanhood. I mean, mm -hmm. 15 people were shot. So we have a tent there. Now they cut the tent, but you know, I've been on the fast this for 40 days. We're gonna go at this strategically. We're gonna continue to you've got to keep pressing them. You don't let them rest. King mm -hmm. used to say, never let them rest. You don't let them rest. You push the petition. We need to be citizens. That's how you move them. You got to move them. With 15 people were shot on that corner. And with the help of Ados and, 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 and other fine citizens, people know we're on that corner. At Seven Knife and Carpenter. And Providence has us on that corner for a reason. Because we got to speak from that corner that we cannot give our people stones they need bread and because of you know representative ford and this, this collective effort of citizens working together we can win we can again i'm gonna tell you you guys we can win this fight keep pushing the petitions and believe me Prisca is the king who has no clothes it's, it's going you ain't gotta you ain't gotta talk about him i ain't gotta call him what i Boy, I tell you, I really want to signify on that dude. I'm cutting mm. him some slack, but I got to be, you know, I got to be a little pastoral sometimes, brother boy. Yes. I'm cutting, him, I'm, I'm cutting him some slack because mm. I know how to talk about your mama to your face with your mama in the room. Mm. Uh -oh. So oh, boy. That's how I, not, that's not the how dozens. I <laughs> oh, not the dozens, Pastor. Watch out yeah, there now. So, <laughs> stick the moon, Pastor. Stick the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I like signifying. I love. I got a PhD in signifying. 
you know, how to, you, know how to, you know how to signify you know how to signify growing up in Inglewood real good. Uh, that's right. That's right. You know, that's right. You know what, McDonald, um, Rick and we got the same backdrop. We got two windows that look alike with blinds that look alike. We're painted the same color. We are stigmas. Hey, look at that. <laughs> oh wow! Oh gosh, I, I'm so Listen, trying not to make this a divine a nine thing. thing. Got, <laughs> you know what, man? You know what? I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna come to y'all's right share chapter, man. <laughs> hey, come on, we got enough of them here in Chicago. Come on through. Listen, but I ain't gonna do nothing. All y'all do is shake my hand and say that's it. I love your history. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Representative oh, Ford, I'll let you take that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, this this is such a, a, a needed, much needed, and outdated move for all of our communities, specifically the mm -hmm. South and West Side. That I'm I'm really wanting to see move forward. I really want to see the needle moved um, on this, and I know that I'm committed to stepping up. And we have some sigma. Gamma rolls out there too. I see. Um, committed to <laughs> yes. pushing uh, as much as I can for for this in the circle of of a network of the community that I have um, as well. I definitely want to see you know outside communities, the communities outside of the south and west side, getting involved too and holding Pritzker's feet to the fire, uh, especially the black people who voted for it throughout the state. We have this understanding that that violence is is it's ruthless. It's a it's a health crisis. You know, these yeah. are the things that need to be addressed, and the people that put him in office need to hold him accountable to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what what it's, it, this reminds me of why we need reparations, and we got to make the case. So, in when we look at the need for this executive order, people think that you're just gonna help black people. But when you help people, you help all people. And so mm -hmm. when things get better for black people, then things get better for everybody. And that's yeah. what yes. it's right. It gets better for everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as society realizes that, the better off we're going to be. So the same thing with reparations. I don't think the case has been made enough to let people know that when black people are are finally given what they are old right. and repaired with reparations, it's going to benefit the whole country. Yeah. It's going to benefit everybody. So once again, everybody thinks that it only benefits black people if black people get reparations. But it benefits us all. It's going to benefit white people. It's going to benefit everybody in, in the country, you know? And I don't think that people understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you know what, actually, uh, uh, Rep. Ford, I think a lot of people do understand it. I think that a lot of people out there are more concerned about us not being the bottom cast anymore than about the welfare of the country as a whole. I really believe that. Hurt it's hurting them, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? that's, that's what makes, and I was even telling this uh, to Arthur earlier, that's what makes uh, systemic racism so illogical because the whole premise of it is to, uh, to in, in the socioeconomic stature is to have a, a top tier and a bottom tier. And even we, we, we look at, you know, like the color wealth studies and we see where, you know, uh, white folks fall as far as like, you know, wealth in this country is about 90% that well owns 90% of the wealth versus uh, Black Americans owning about 2.6% of the wealth. But even in that particular cog of white supremacy racism, you even see the sacrifice flies with when it comes to uh, white folks that be sacrificed in order to keep this particular system going, right? So it, it makes, to me, it makes more sense to say we have to, we have to work to properly end this particular system because it is actually a detriment to any person that's involved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In, yeah, yeah. That's what I had to say about that. You know, Continue. there is this book <laughs> called um, by um, Isabel um, Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cast. It it speaks to it one hundred percent about um, the caste system where it's set up to keep people um, subordinate to others. It's right. so good. This book, she's she's all over it, and. Um, 
I, I would encourage people to read it because she talks about the caste system, how they developed this system to keep people, just as you just said, um, Ms. McDonald, in the different, uh, in the lower class mm -hmm. while they control. And what people don't understand is even white people are in that caste system. Yeah. Because it's not just blacks, yeah. but they've been psychologically um, brainwashed to think that they're better than us because of white privilege has told them that they're better than black people, right. even though they're in the struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the crazy part. So and, 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 and well, that's why, why, one perfect example why. was um, when President Obama was passing the Affordable Care Act, the white people said, I don't want Obamacare. And they said, well, would you want Affordable Care Act? They said, yes. And they said, did you know that's the same thing? Yeah, but I, I don't want Obamacare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything that, you know what, and it's kind of weird uh, how racism works. Like anything that will help black people, white people will shut it down even if it helps them. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Always has. <laughs> always has. Yeah. yeah. Always has. It still will. Yeah, and it's and insane. Look. Look, that, that's the unfortunate part. They, their their mentality isn't that that's not their mentality. Their mentality doesn't think that they're still tearing us down. I mean, some of them do, but it's the, the scarier ones are the ones who feel like or who think, think that they're not contributing to that demise. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's the unfortunate part when you run into that. The the and I think you know mo most people will say it best when we talk about this the systemic racist struggle. You know, you have these. Uh, liberal minded individuals who think that they're contributing, but in fact, they're still the demise of the black community. And yeah. it's yeah. important because they don't know that. You know, mm -hmm. they're the most oblivious ones and the most probably destructive to our ability to continue to, to move forward in progress. Right. Mm -hmm. Then Martin and Malcolm both uh, 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 comment on the white liberal and the white moderate. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. Sure did. Yeah. yeah they, they both uh, yeah. nearly said the same words. Pretty much, you know, but, you know, I would say that uh, Malcolm was a bit more, you know, forceful with his words and, 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 and Martin was more preacher with his words, but, you know, no shade to preachers. Pastor Williams, by the way, you the same? <laughs> look, 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 see, see, it's, see, the, your solution is right in front of your face. Right. And it makes too much sense for us to see they know, you know, you show an intelligence when you when you do what we're doing. And mm -hmm. that bothers some people because you show intelligence and unfortunate that's a part of that violent culture. Go back to the fact it, it ain't about racism. America was built on violence. It's in their DNA. It's a system of violence. And this, mm. that's why we need to declare violence at the health crisis. This unlearned behavior, the issue with white folks is not white uh, supremacy, it's white complexity. White mm. complexity. I had to learn mm. that from Simpson. He said, no, it ain't what, mm. he said it's white complexity. Mm. I, they know that you, they mom and daddy, they got anthropology. They know that the, the more they dig in that earth, they know what that is. They know that Phoenix is rising. All we have to do, we can have a victory in Illinois right now. Mm -hmm. it's, talking is over for me. I'm not interested in talking. I'm just doing this because I like y'all. That's why I'm here. But here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. All we got to do is push on this petition, y'all. Look here. All of our fraternities, Sigmas, Alphas, Q. Everybody need to put their differences aside. We need to push this. I tell you what, does everybody want to eat? If you don't want to eat, don't raise your hand. Mm -hmm. It is this is a, we we must survive in this pandemic. So you ain't got time to have pandemic ego now. That's mm -hmm. over with. This is a new world. We have mm -hmm. Prisker. Prisker is in the corner. He's in the corner. He has he has disrespected you all. It's bigger than Ford now. Because mm. when you slap that forward, you just slap me. Mm. You don't return the people's champion's call. You don't mm -hmm. return citizens' call. But he ain't just doing that to black folks. 
he doing at the white folks because they told me their own selves. Mm. White folks told me. White folks told me in power that he don't return that call. He think he's mm. running the Hyatt. Mm. He think <laughs> Illinois is the Hyatt. Child. This ain't the Hyatt. Mm. This is the state of Illinois. Oof. So oh, we, must, we must I be believe, citizens. I believe they call that tea in the community. That's what that's called. That's called right, tea. Right, right, right. Spilling and the tea, rather. Right tea right there. Yeah. Straight so, up. So, I, so we keep, we keep, we keep pressing him. He got ninety-eight percent of the black vote. I mean, my, how can you can, how can you continue to support somebody that won't respond to the need of his constituents? So we mm -hmm. come with him, not in an act of black power and a little bit of that too but we come in an act of citizenship executive mm -hmm. orders that's mm -hmm. it that's it so my thing is is that let me say see black america don't understand what's happened see black america needs to understand y'all got to communicate what happened here at the george floyd we had a young rep that say we can do this we can straighten out now do you know if these other black, you know, I told the speaker, I told, I told you all early before Ford got on, I talked to the Senate president. He agreed with Ford's position. I talked to presidents of unions, white men. They agree in the executive orders. They agree. They ain't lying to me mm. because they see the profit. Mm -hmm. And the same mm. way with past, dealing with the violence. Do you know the resources and the public policies that change with legislation? Come on, y'all. So enough mm. of this talking. Let's just go ahead and push this. Let's press this man. I tell you, let's press him. He, he can be defeated. You all have the Democratic Party on the ropes. You all have the political parties on the rope right now. If they can mm. continue to distract and put these talking heads out here with this kumbaya talk, I don't you don't want to hear that. At mm -hmm. the national level, there's reparation. At the local level, there's two executive orders. We need a victory right now. We need a damn right. victory, y'all. We need a damn victory. Our people need a victory. I mean, boy done done his job. You can't ask the boy to do no more. Hey, you can't ask mm -hmm. him. You know he ain't no boy. But you know what we say in the hood. You can't <laughs> ask the man to do no more. You can't yeah. ask him to do no more. As a matter of fact, he's the only one that's working. I don't take I, it. Just, you know, that. I love the mother rep, <laughs> but guess what? Guess what? I mean, Ford knows that the people, he serves the people. They're his constituents. Wherever mm -hmm. he goes in the state of Illinois, he's your representative. Unfortunately, too many of our so called black elected officials, they're taking their orders from the Democratic Party. Yep. That yep. way, how the party going to move. But guess right. what? Mm -hmm. The party needs to know one thing. Two executive orders. And the bottom line is they're playing power politics with black folks locally and nationally. Mm -hmm. Power politics are going on. Mm -hmm. So don't get hoodwinked behind this. It's, I done took the blue pill. Ford, if the he was a pretty girl, I'd kiss him. If yeah. Ford was a pretty woman, I'd kiss him because he bought something magnificent to us. And mm -hmm. then we said, okay, the price goes up. Now we want two executives. At first we asked for right. one, now we ask it for two. Let's mm -hmm. take care of some business. Because Let's look here, these it. young brothers out here hungry. I talked to them on the corner now. Mm -hmm. And when I came to the corner, I let them know I wasn't none violent either. So we had to understand. <laughs> but they hungry out here. They mm -hmm. don't want to hear no nonsense. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear. That, that situation that took place on 79th, took place because a politician created a conflict down there. Right. Not them. An elected official created a conflict for 15 people to get shot mm. with a lie. So I know mm. the truth. I mean, I, I walk amongst the people, and I'm glad that I can walk amongst my people. Look, Dr. Amos Wilson said this. He said, the only way they can destroy us, y'all, if we stop loving each other. And we've mm. got to use that. We've got to love and respect each other. We treat each other horrible, too. It's, it's a new world. It's a new order. Mm -hmm. And folks that think they're calling shots out here, they ain't calling shots no more. Mm. The bottom line is Ford has done something legally revolutionary, y'all. Oh, it's already here. Executive orders. And they sign them every day. Trump is mm. Mr. Executive Order. Obama was Executive Order. 
So now, come on, y'all. This is where's the dance? What we what we what we gonna talk about here? Push this, push this, push this. I tell you what, let's have, let's. I tell you what, let's have a executive order social distance stepping party. I bet the Negroes will show up for that. <laughs> All right, see, see, see. see. I got to get on another one. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, well, wait. What kind of stepping we doing? We do it. We do a Greek stepping, or we do a Chicago stepping? Because I can do both. Chicago stepping, man. Chicago you know don't, don't matter. It, it, you know, we can, I, I tell you what, if we if we do this whole thing, we can go from a Chicago step in right into a Greek step in back into a Chicago step in, <laughs> step in all the way to the legislatures to get this executive order signed. You did. Yeah, right. I'm on. It. We did. You it. know, and, you know, um, I, and I just want to uh, because I know that like we got to uh, wrap up soon because representative for you, you got to go do uh, representative for things. And uh, but I wanted to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, like you yeah, do. Yeah, like, that's what he does. <laughs> right, right. You you represented for. You have to be represented for. How you know? That's right. I need to right. do some right. representative for things. I'm working on it. Representative for. I know. Well, I mean, y'all y'all need to talk. I'll make sure that y'all get each other's emails before this is all done. But you know, I, I want to thank uh, you, Representative Ford, and thank you, Pastor Anthony, for being on uh, the thirteen percent. I appreciate you all so much. You know. Uh, of sharing uh, your time with us, uh, your precious time with us, uh, to talk about these very um, important initiatives that we're really trying to get done. Uh, people, this is what local equity is all about. You know, we're about, you know, when you when you talk about ADOS, and especially, you know, ADOS chapters, we're about, you know, local equity and national reparations. That mm -hmm. That's our motto, you know, yeah. local equity and national reparations. And, and so we're uh, definitely uh, asking everyone, and I'm gonna show a video at the end of this, like, you know, of our ask, our, our call to action about going to uh, www.itshardbeingblack.info. I believe that that information is in the show notes below. Make sure you guys are going to that particular website, signing that petition, uh, there's a donate button there too. So like if you want to help us continuously push this particular initiative so that we can make this legislation law, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with the stroke of a pen, yeah. JB Pritzker, well, which you, know, you can yabba dabba do. Can I just say one thing before I sign off? Yes, yes, yes. There's yes. no bill that ever passes without people having resources to get it done. So to ask for donations is a must. Yes. No matter what bill, what legislation, I don't care who and what legislation is being passed. If you see a lot of people doing it, it's because somebody got money behind it. People don't move just because they should move in a democracy. It's very hard. There's always money behind movements. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we need you all to um, donate to the movement. All right. That's right. Thank yeah, you so, so much. Yeah, so so give us your money. Yes, so anywho, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you everybody for joining. I know Rep Report Representative Ford had to go. Um, I'm about to uh, play this uh, little you dig, and then we're gonna go out. So again, thank everyone uh, in the chat uh, for joining us. Uh, thank you to all of our patrons uh, for giving to our channel. Especially want to thank our top patrons, uh, Marsha Filippio, uh, best name ever, and me because I believe in what we do. If you all want to become a patron of YFNA News, all that information is in the show notes below. Buy us a coffee. We like our coffee, black, no sugar, no cream. Well, I like mine, so like agave and all that. I'm going to take my straight to Starbucks. Thank you, Pat Anthony, get his straight from Starbucks. Uh, no, I go to uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, okay. I was going to say, I'm Starbucks is a little questionable. Now, they suspect. We, <laughs> they, they're a little suspect. That's, that's another right, topic right. for another show. That's right, right. We're going to talk about that, Rick, on in black and white. You know, Starbucks, the suspects. Okay. <laughs> 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 so shout out to everybody. Shout out for you guys um, actually joining us. We really appreciate all of um, the input that happened this evening. And make sure again to like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit that bell so you can get a notification every time YFNA News goes live with our, our show, The 13%, our sibling show hosted by Rick Lockhart the second, and any of the content that we're actually producing on this particular channel. And we appreciate all of it. 
Thank you and have a good evening. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm Anthony Williams and I'm the pastor here at the Great Avalon Park Community Church. This church that I'm standing in front of named this community. It's historic. But I'm calling to let you know and to inform you as a citizen, not as a pastor, not as an activist, but as a citizen, that State Representative, State Representative Sean Ford has presented a plan to rebuild black communities across the board in the state of Illinois. State Representative has said in simplicity, listen to me folks, in simplicity, that all J.B. Prisker has to do is sign an executive order. Well, Prisker has said it's hard being black. Well, J.B., if it's hard being black, when is the last time you've been to East St. Louis, J.B.? When is the last time you've been to Robbins, Illinois, J.B.? When is the last time you've been to Lundell or Inglewood or uh, well, Woodlawn should just belong to the University of Chicago, you know. Uh, when is the last time you've been to Austin? I mean, where have you been, J.B.? You're saying it's hard being black. Black Americans mm -hmm. built this country. And I'm appealing to you all, be a citizen and stand with us. Stand with us and stand with Representative Sean Ford. I'm asking that you speak with one voice, we have an opportunity to be an example to America. Let's speak with one voice. We are here supporting Chicago Love Day in support of passing HR 433, violence as a health crisis, as a public health crisis, and also to support J.B. Pritzker signing an executive order in order to release rapid relief, much needed, much needed relief in the black communities in, in, in uh, Illinois. We are actually on the corner of 79th and Carpenter. This is the area where the 15 people were shot uh, after a funeral uh, in retaliation. And this is something that can't happen any longer. We already know that whole communities are not violent people. Make that known. Whole communities are not violent. If whole communities are not violent, it's going to take a massive transfer of capital in order to invest in our community and also in its people. I want the governor to pull together through his powers. The governor has power, the power vested in him as governor, pursuant to the Illinois Constitution, provide for the health and safety of the state. And so we asked him to form the task force to immediately form the Illinois Commission for Equity and Inclusion. This Equity and um, Inclusion Task Force will meet with his agency heads, legislators, and community leaders to make sure that we give the governor a plan within seven days to provide an executive order to begin immediately dealing with the hardships in Illinois that relates to black people. So Governor Lee, hold me, Lee, the way Abraham Lincoln did, sign the executive order and be the leader for this country and the leader for this state. Thank you so much. My name is Marvin Watson, and J.B. Pritzker has said, it's hard being black. W.B. E. Du Bois said, being poor is hard. But being a poor race in a land full of dollars is the bottom of hardship. It was right when W.B. E. Du Bois said it, and it's right today when J.B. Christmas said it. Rep. Ford and all of us, all the Illinois black citizens, are demanding that J.B. Pritzker, Governor Pritzker, sign an executive order to bring emergency funds to black communities all throughout the state of Illinois as a short-term solution for what we are suffering right now. And as a long-term solution, we need the governor to become an advocate for federal reparations for American descendants of slavery yes. all across yes. the country. Yes. Yes. Governor Pritzker has 
Representative Ford, I said, lead like Lincoln. Make this the land of the land of peace and the land of civility. Sign the executive order now. Also, we need everybody who's listening. We need to start an email campaign right now to your state reps and to uh, our Governor J.B. Pritzker right now and demand that they pass, sign this executive order. Sign the executive order to bring emergency funds that goes in the hands of black businesses in Illinois and black citizens in Illinois so we can shop at the businesses we rebuild. Sign the executive order, email your governor, email your state rep. We need this done 